Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about the books I read in August. So this past month I read seven books which is a great number for me and I read a bunch of fantasy and some thrillers. So let's just get right into the first book which was Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This one was a really fun historical fantasy romance. It's centered around 20 year old Theodora who is helping her cousin Vanessa enter the London season for her debut. But Dora has been cursed by a fairy since birth and that leaves her with mismatched eyes and the inability to feel emotions. This causes Dora to learn how to act properly in social situations but people still talk negatively about her. But then we have our mysterious magician that enters the picture, Lord Elias Wilder, and he's quite interested in Theodora and they get mixed up in some fairy uh, troubles. I really enjoyed reading about Dora as a character because even though she's not able to feel emotions, she's very compassionate and she really bases her actions off of her heart, not so much her mind. I think the author did a wonderful job at actually describing raw and powerful emotions through her words. It really gave Dora an, an insightful feel that many others in the book didn't have. I also really enjoyed the friendship between Dora and her cousin Vanessa and it was nice to see that dynamic play out alongside the romance. Speaking of the romance, we have our love interest Elias and he is described as being very uncouth, very rude to people, but his rude actions and behaviors towards Dora doesn't really seem to affect her. He's taken aback by that and Dora manages to find her way into his heart and they do go through some fairy problems and it was very entertaining to read about that. This book absolutely fed my addiction to a Bridgerton-like books and there's also some similarities of Howl's movie Castle in this book as well so if you like those two things I would highly recommend you to check out Half a Soul. Then I read Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I also rated this one a 4 out of 5 and this book is the, the epitome of cozy fantasy when I hear cozy fantasy. This is a slice of life book. It's um, describing everyday life of fantastical creatures and in this one we are following a retired orc mercenary Viv and she is opening up her first cafe in a new city and we follow her journey of finding the location for the cafe, building the cafe herself, and her experimenting with her menu based off customers feedback. So it was really nice to see an orc open up her small business and succeed and fail and like learn from her mistakes. Very much needed in a fantasy book for me. There are potential threats past and present that do affect the cafe and Viv and it's interesting to see her navigate that without going back to her mercenary ways. There are aspects of found family and a cute romance is sprinkled in there. Another book that I highly recommend. Then I read a massive book. It is Rhythm of War by Brandon Tennyson and I read this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is book 4 in the Stormlight Archive series and it is just a massive installment. It's 1200 pages but I still enjoyed it and it was interesting to see where our characters got up to in this book. We're set on the world of Roshar and it's known for its brutal weather, wars, and politics. There's an ancient order known as the Knights Radiant that fell and they left behind their magical and mysterious shard plates and shard blades that give men a new way to wage their wars. As a very brief description, there's also a huge magical system and very huge cast of characters but we do follow some main ones such as a soldier turning into a slave, a scholar's apprentice who may become a thief, and we have a high prince who is experiencing disturbing visions of ages long past. In Rhythm of War, we do see a continuing expansion on Roshar and how it plays a greater role in the Cosmere bookish universe that Sanderson has created. We also have some goodbyes to beloved characters, developments of acceptance and healing for many characters, and there are many surprises along the way. My only issue with this book was that the middle dragged a bit because there was a huge 
amount of time dedicated to experiments with magic and that just really slowed down the pace of the book but the last quarter of the book was action-packed and it really did pay off the entire plot line for this book. I really enjoyed the storylines of Venli, Adolin, and Kaladin the most and I did think that these plot lines for Navani and Shallan were very repetitive. In the end, all the characters had their shining moments and I think it's kind of tough for me to review a fourth book in a 10 book series. If any of this sounds interesting to you, I would recommend you to pick up the first book, which is The Way of Kings. Then I picked up a quest fantasy book, and this is Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher, and I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. We're on an adventure with a ragtag group of friends, and their plan is to kill an abusive prince. Our protagonist is Mara, and she has witnessed the death of her older sister at the hands of this prince, and she is going on this quest with these people that she meets along the way in order to save her other older sister from meeting the same fate. But there is a protective spell placed on the prince and that prevents anyone from harming him. So Mara approaches a grave witch and she is assigned three impossible tasks to complete in order to break that curse. Nettle and Bone has a lot of horror elements and I think it makes for a perfect fault read. We're thrown immediately into the action right from the first chapter where we see Mara crafting a bone dog and it comes alive. The narrative does switch back from present day timeline to Mara's childhood and it did bring a lot of insight of what happened with her older sisters and this prince. Although this book is a little bit slow paced, I did love how the characters are in their mid-30s and they bring their own perspectives and life experiences to this quest. There's a lot of fun banter around this found family. There's that grave witch, there's also a fallen knight, a fairy godmother, the bone dog that came alive, and we also have a demon possessed chicken. So I really love the animal characters, they're really fun to read about and just to see how they emoted. Overall, this book really did remind me of the Brothers Grimm type of fairy tales being quite dark and gothic, but there's also a fun adventure as well. Then I decided to switch things up and to read a thriller and I picked up All the Dangerous Things by Stacey William and I read this one a 3 out of 5 stars. Right away we find out that our protagonist Isabel, her toddler Mason has been missing for over a year and Isabel as a result cannot sleep. She has severe insomnia. There are no leads on her son's case. So Isabel decides to have an interview with a true crime podcaster. This brings about her dark childhood and Isabel has a hard time trusting her memory. I really did like this thriller. It was enjoyable to read and there are great twists at the end. However, I couldn't get past the three different timelines that were jumping back and forth. I did like the exploration of how women can be vilified and how women always think that we need to be doing everything right and apologizing for everything that we think that we are doing wrong <laughs> and how it really shows Isabel just wanting to save her son and to get her son back. Speaking about the characters, they're not all that likable but this does reflect on how humans are not only good or bad. What did add to the narration from Isabel is that she is an unreliable narrator, she sleepwalks, and she has a huge case of a sleep deprivation, which really did add to the question of what actually happened to her son. Despite the jumping timelines, this book really reads really quickly, it has really short chapters, and I like the emphasis on the importance of mental help and getting help when needed. Overall, it was a very intense thriller and I do recommend it. Then I picked up another thriller, The Night Swim by Megan Golden, and I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars. This one covers two different true crime cases, one that is present day and one that is 25 years ago, and it was very neatly divided and separated in the book. The present day case is told through a podcast, which is our protagonist podcast, Rachel Crawl, and the case that is 25 years ago is told through mysterious letters as being sent to Rachel. So it was really easy to follow both cases and to see how they're interconnected with each other. There is a trigger warning for this book. Both crime cases are centered around rape and it really shows the implications if a case can be even made to trial. Truth be told, this book was hard for me to read and I think the author did a good job at covering the survivor's perspective 
and how nuanced a court trial with rape can be. I thought the court trial part of the book was a bit dull but it really showed the judicial system and how it works and I did listen to The Night Swim on audiobook so that really helped with capturing the court trial as well as the um, mysterious letters that are being sent to Rachel. And there are chapters that are being read as a real podcast so I felt like I was listening to a real true crime podcast. Overall, I think this mystery thriller was very impactful. For my last book of the month, I read A Conjuring of Light by V. E. Schwab. This is my reread of the last book of the Shades of Magic trilogy and I still maintain my rating of a 5 out of 5 stars. This book series follows four parallel worlds that are connected through the city of London and there are rare magicians known as Antari that can jump in between these Londons. We're following Kel from Red London and he's an ambassador to all the other Londons but his side hobby of smuggling gets him into a wild and whirlwind of an adventure. This finale really did hold up since the last time I read it. There's tons of action, lovable characters, and a satisfying conclusion. Rereading the entire trilogy did help refresh my memory on what happened and to prepare me for the spin-off series that's the fragile threads of power. I won't say too much about what happened in this book but Kel is still struggling with his role. Lila is still acting like she's that girl. <laughs> Alucard and Rai are so sweet together and uh, Holland has a very dark past. I love how this last book brought everything together from the previous two books and resolved all those storylines in an explosive finale. I am very curious to see how our old cast of characters will intermingle with the new cast of characters in Threads of Power. Those were all the books I read in August. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.